The Lord be with you. It's a true joy to see you all, and welcome to Trinity. It is the weekend of the second Sunday in Lent, and I might remind everyone, please fill out an attendance card that's very helpful for us to keep that uh, record of your attendance. Uh, it's in the pew rack in front of you. You can put that in the offering plate at, the, at that time. Uh, we are in the season of Lent, and this weekend, uh, as most of you will remember, something special, and that's the fact that tomorrow for the Sunday morning service, we'll actually have our service in the gymnasium. It's the start of National Lutheran Schools Week. Uh, we at Trinity, anyway, are observing National Lutheran Schools Week this coming week. And so if it was in any of your plans to, of you present here tonight to come again tomorrow, be reminded it's over at the school. Moreover, the uh, Bible study as well will be over at the school. During our Wednesday services, we are focusing on the blessed gift of reconciliation. The blessed gift of reconciliation. So Wednesday evening, uh, service at 6, but there's also a noon opportunity. And uh, you can choose either one. And also we have a meal after the noon service. We have a meal before the 6 o'clock evening service. Great opportunity for fellowship. The offering envelopes are here. They are against that uh, south uh, wall of the west nave. Also, don't forget daylight saving time next weekend. Daylight saving time. Don't be the person who, who forgets that one. And I wonder if there are any other announcements. Good evening. That's hot, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm Jeremy Burkett. I'm the current chair of the Board of Elders. Uh, Trinity Lutheran School is an important part of the ministry and mission here uh, with the Trinity family. Uh, the last voters meeting, the congregation authorized spending $17,500 as part of an engagement with Shive Hattery Firm uh, as the next step to developing a master plan for the long-term usage and improvement of the school facilities. Uh, in keeping with standing guidelines, the, this expenditure was contingent on raising the money in advance. Uh, the elders support this effort and ask for the congregation's ongoing prayers for the entire Trinity family, both congregation and school families. And we encourage you to consider contributing as you are able and see fit. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Not. Please greet one another in the name of our dear Lord and prepare for the uh, opening hymn, which would be number 936.
Please turn to page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please turn in your order of service to the intro it for today. He remembers his covenant forever. Seek the Lord and his strength. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. O oh, offspring of Abraham, his servant, Children of Jacob, his ones. he is the Lord our God. He remembers his covenant forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. 
Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on still going toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame. The epistle is from Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is 
with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Seated for the hymn.
When a parent or a teacher says, I'm only going to say this once, they call a special sort of attention to what they're about to say, implying, of course, that there will be consequences of some sort for those who do not heed their words. But also, repetition indicates a certain weight to that which is being repeated, which is why there is wisdom in the old adage that goes, if the teacher says the same thing twice, it's probably going to be on the test. But what do you get when the only begotten Son of God, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, the one who turns water into wine, not by some trick, but on the basis of his being the word of God from the beginning, who himself made everything that has been made, what do you get when this teacher come from God echoes three times that which was spoken since all mankind fell in Adam's fall by God himself and which was repeated by countless Old Testament witnesses and which was told by John the Baptist, who was himself the greatest of all those born of women. What do you get when Jesus says three times, it is necessary for the Son of Man to be lifted up in order that everyone believing in him have life eternal? You get the most important word ever spoken. That's not an overstatement. All who have ever lived, who live now, and who will ever live in the future, live and die by this saying. It's why all Scripture bears witness to this central saying, it is necessary for the Son of Man to be lifted up in order that everyone believing in Him have life eternal. God the Father sent His beloved Son into the world so that He, Jesus, would both make this saying known to all the world and be Himself the one to fulfill it. Now if you wonder, what does it mean that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Or perhaps you marvel, that Jesus could use such strong language as, unless one should be begotten from above, he is not able to see the kingdom of God. Or even stronger, unless one be begotten out of water and the Spirit, he is not able to enter into the kingdom of God. If you're asking, how are these things, Jesus said, able to take place? If you're only comfortable with some of the things Jesus says and does, and you try to ignore or reinterpret the rest, well then, you're in good company. And when I say you, I mean we. And when I say good, I mean good, like being a blind man and finding another blind man to keep you company while you walk, but it's only good as long as you two blind men don't lead each other into a pit. And of course, that's the sort of thing that's simply inevitable when you've got two blind men leading each other. What I'm saying is that Nicodemus is a guy just like you and me. A guy who thinks he knows God and who knows his word. He's a guy who can say, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God, and yet he remains Abraham's child in the flesh only, but not in the spirit. Which is like saying, I like Jesus, but I'm not interested in being gathered by him into his church. Nicodemus is a guy who's heard John 3.16 from the Old Testament witnesses like Isaiah and David and the patriarchs like Abraham countless times and said, yeah, yeah, that old thing. I've known that since I was a kid. Which is just code for I'm looking for a guy to match the theology I want out of the Scriptures. And you, Jesus, aren't quite what I'm here for, even if you've said and done a few things that I can get behind. And even though what I say, I say to those 
who will inherit eternal life by faith in Christ Jesus. I say these things to warn you against that which the old Adam, the flesh born of flesh, has to whisper in your ear to turn you away from Christ, lift it up for your sake and for the sake of the world. It is that which Christ himself warns us of when he says, that being begotten out of the flesh is flesh, and that being begotten out of the Spirit is spirit. And though the stakes are so high, unless one is begotten out of water and the Spirit, he is not able to enter into the kingdom of God. The flesh, or the old Adam, knows not the voice of the Spirit, and that he breathes the very same words spoken by Christ. And the old Adam knows what the water is for to drown him. But such is our entrance into the kingdom of God. It is through water and the Spirit. It is through baptism. Though to be sure, the baptism which Jesus speaks to Nicodemus here about is his own baptism. If Nicodemus was to see or to enter into the kingdom of God, then he must perceive Jesus to be the Lamb of God and the Son of God, which is the fact of his own baptism, and become a disciple of the Christ speaking to him. And this is not just for Nicodemus to see or enter the kingdom of God. It is necessary that one be baptized into the baptism of Jesus. That refers to us all. But what makes the baptism of Jesus so necessary that all the world would perish without it? Without his baptism by John in the Jordan, Israel would not know the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and neither would the world, you and I know it. See uh, John chapter 1 verses 31 through 34 to see what I mean. Jesus himself is the one who gives to the world this new birth of water and the Spirit. Upon him in the water of his baptism, the Spirit descended and remained. Out of his mouth came the promise of the Holy Spirit who was to come. And from his cross, he gave his Holy Spirit, and from his side, pierced, flowed that water into which you and I are baptized. Indeed, the baptism of the Spirit with which Jesus baptizes is nothing other than his death. And this baptism of his death is proffered or given to Those who believe in the waters of the renewal of the Spirit. I am by no means making a distinction between a water baptism and a spirit baptism. These uh, come from those who promote that flavor of poisonous false doctrine. Those who call themselves born-again Christians upon the basis of having had some highly emotional, even physiological experience in which they say that the Holy Spirit was actually given to them. In saying such things, those who promote this bind consciences about a thing described nowhere in the Scriptures, causing you to doubt whether you are a Christian or not, unless you've had an experience like theirs. There is but one baptism. Ephesians 4 verse 5 says, The baptism of Christ, into which you who had the water poured on you and the Spirit by the saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So by faith which is worked in you by the external work of the Holy Spirit through God's Word, you can say, friend, you mean well, but do not trouble my conscience. I am baptized into Christ's death. And because of this, I am a Christian. And I have been begotten from above. I have been begotten 
out of water and spirit. In Christ Jesus, I am born again a new creation. In order that you may have this confidence that you have been baptized into the baptism of Jesus. Jesus, with the Old Testament witnesses and with John the Baptist, speaks. Christ Jesus is the God of Israel. And He speaks what He hears from His Father, even God. These are the heavenly things which Jesus says throughout John's Gospel, and most of all, Christ proclaims His own death that the world would believe and have life everlasting. Just as the people of God in Israel, dying though they were by the fiery fiery serpents that had bitten them, looked upon the serpent lifted up upon a pole by Moses in the wilderness, and they lived so too do we who by faith and the water of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, dying though we are in our trespasses and sins, look upon the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who is lifted up upon the cross. And we live eternally. This is the way in which God loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son in order that everyone believing into Him should not perish, but have life eternal. God did not send His Son into the world in order to condemn the world, though whoever does not believe is condemned already, but in order that He saved the world through Him. Thus, Christ repeats what is spoken and borne witness to before him, that he must be lifted up upon a cross with the world's sin in order that everyone who believes in him have life eternal. This is the good news of Christ's first coming, that it's not too late. He judges the world only in his second coming. This is why we who by faith trust in the waters of the renewal of the Spirit, which grants us purification through the blood of the Lamb. This delay of God's judgment is why we proclaim Christ crucified within the context of our God-given vocations. This is why we bear witness to what we know and see. Christ lifted up on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and for the world's. To be sure, such a message was a a stumbling block to the Jews, was folly to the Gentiles, and is veiled to those who are perishing, such is the way of the gospel. But nevertheless, we do not lose heart, saying with Christ over and over again the word of the scandalous gospel, that Christ was lifted up on the cross for the salvation of the world, and we do so within our homes in our schools, at our workplaces, in our preaching, in word or deed, and in whatever we do. It is, after all, the most important word ever spoken, so it certainly bears repeating. And because of that word spoken by Christ himself, the baptized don't sweat. We have eternal life from God the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.
we continue with the offering. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Please stand. Heavenly Father, your Son has shown your love to the world in his death and resurrection. Give your people hearts to remember your gracious works and to proclaim your name in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, You promise us an inheritance, not because of your law, but because of your promise to Abraham and to us. In your grace, nourish us in the faith unto life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you made your servant Abraham the father of us all through faith, and you have given all fathers the calling of Abraham to hand down the gospel of Christ. Fill their hearts with the words of Christ and remember them according to your great mercy, Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, fill all at Trinity Lutheran Church and school with a zeal for your truth and a love for one another, that together we might be about your bidding to make disciples of all nations. Bless those among us who are preparing for baptism, those who are preparing for the Lord's Supper and Confirmation, and their families. Thank you for Trinity's teachers, and bless them with joy in their labors. Grant them faithfulness and diligence and a cheerful confidence in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, remember our nation and its leaders. Bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws and enable us to be good and responsible citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, be near to the sick and the suffering, especially Joanne Bach, Ethel Baker, Steve Balster, Jeremy Brown, Carmen D. Catlin, Pastor Doldy's grandfather Paul, Alice Hoffmeyer, Alice Hoffmeyer's sister Jan, Ross Huneman, Mackenzie Kelly's mother Duska, Kenny Meyer, Vera Rowley, Ted Smith, Carol Stellwagen, and Michael Ty. Comfort them with your divine promises and grant healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, Nicodemus was led by the word of Jesus to the cross. And from the cross, he received the body of Jesus. 
Grant us faith like His to trust Your Word and receive Christ's body and blood in the Holy Sacrament for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in Your mercy, Lord God, You give life to the dead and have united the faithful of all ages in the body of Christ. As You shelter all the saints in the arms of Your mercy, So comfort us who await your final victory over death and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, He took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us stand to sing the Nunc Dimittis. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 